Angeles. Located in Southern California is a big city with lots to discover. We'll dive into the art, culture, and history of LA. Welcome to another episode of Family Travel. I'm your host, Colleen Kelly. Get ready, because we're going to explore Los Angeles beyond Hollywood and the beach. On this vacation, we'll discover that you can do more than just shop at some stores. We'll find art outside and check out some cool cars. Ready, set, go! Then we'll discover a new type of ATM and uncover some facts about fossils. And later, we'll have a blast learning about space and finish off with a walk through LA's history. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> My name is Colleen Kelly, and when I was single, I lived abroad and traveled the world. Then I became a parent and wondered, how would I ever travel again? So I set out to find a new way to travel and get back to exploring the world family style. I'm here to guide you on how to get the most out of your family vacation. Pack your bags and join me, Colleen Kelly. We're going on vacation. Funding provided by... Parents say travel is educational. Kids just think it's fun. It's gotten me up close to dinosaurs, sharks, even real rockets. And that's pretty awesome. Family travel equals family fun. City Pass. Rise and shine, we start this visit to LA at the Farmer's Market. You'll know you're at the entrance to the market when you see the big clock tower. This farmer's market started in 1934 for farmers to sell their produce, and the same holds true today, but with a twist. The farmer's market offers fruits, vegetables, as well as meats and specialty items at the different stalls. More than 90% of all shops and stalls at the farmer's market are independently owned and operated. The smell of coffee is in the air. On average, over 1,000 gallons of coffee are served here every day. That and a donut will curb your appetite as you stroll through the market. Donuts can be found everywhere in the city. Do me a favor and don't leave LA, the donut capital of the world, without trying one of these. Shopping is always more fun with friends. The Wonderlook family met me at the farmer's market. Do you wanna go see the market? Yes, definitely. All right, let's go. Ready, kids? Come on. If the kids are on their best behavior, they might even earn themselves a stop at a couple of kid-friendly stores. First stop, the sticker store, where I have a few tricks up my sleeve. Shopping can also be a teaching opportunity. We are going to try and find five stickers with three different shapes, circle, square, and star. We're gonna play the sticker shape game. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a star, a square, and a circle somewhere in this whole sticker shop. Can you find one? Do you think so? Do you think you can find one? Okay, three, ready, go. Did you find a circle? Let's see, Show me. let's see what you found. <gasps> that is a you circle. You found a circle. Yeah, you found a star. Good. Oh, good. You name our three shapes. Star, square, and circle. Did you find all three? Yes, did you find all three? All right, let's do an art project, are you ready? Let's go do it. Now it's time to put our stickers to good use and make our very own placemat souvenir. We're done decorating. We can take our placemat back inside where we add our name and have it laminated. Put deeper pressed in. Okay. Can you spell your name for me so I can give you the letters? R, there you go. So we're gonna take this placemat that you made and we're gonna put it in this pouch and we're gonna laminate it. Okay. There's your placement. What do you think? Aww. Voila, a personalized souvenir. Have you ever heard the phrase, as happy as a kid in a candy store? Well, let's just say we were all happy playing our next game, finding the colors of the rainbow. Games at a candy store can be an unexpected way to incorporate a little education into your travels. Who wants to play another game? Me, me. Uh, okay, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Do you know the colors of the rainbow? Yeah, red, orange, orange. Good. yellow, green, blue, purple. Wow, you know all of them? Good job. Wow, I'm impressed. Awesome. Okay, we're gonna find the colors of the rainbow, and as soon as we find that, we can have candy, okay? I'm gonna count to three, and you're gonna find red. All red candy, ready? One, two, three, go! 
Can you go okay, red? Okay, oops. He found, oh, red. Now find orange. Oh, he found orange. Yellow. Mm. Great. Oh, green. Oh, green. Press yeah. Look over here. Blue. We need blue. Oh, that's blue. Oh, and one more blue. blue. Okay, oh. now we need one more color. What's the last color of the rainbow? What is it? Purple. Purple. Where is purple? Yeah. You see purple? <gasps> good job. All right. Oh. You just won, Preston. Oh. Good job. After the game, it was time to dig in. Letting the kids use the tongs to get the candy into their bags is a good way to practice small motor skills. Go ahead. OK. Ready to check out. How much do you think that weighs, Preston? One pound or two pounds? Uh, a lot of pounds. A lot of, yeah, I think <laughs> yours weighs a lot of pounds. It weighs 0. 0.24 of a pound. Wow, that's a lot of candy. Yours weighs 0. 0.55. <gasps> that's a lot, a lot of that's candy. That's over a half pound. Wow. Nothing better than the sweet taste of victory. Across the street from the farmer's market is The Grove, a modern marketplace with shops, a theater, and many dining options. Here you'll find vintage-looking trolleys that link the farmer's market to The Grove, and the kids are going to get a kick out of this one. Find the stairs of the trolley to get a bird's eye view of The Grove. You'll see wide open spaces perfect for the kids. LA is known for shopping. Let's find out from a local mom where the best shopping spots are for families. So we all know that LA is known for their shopping. What advice can you give us about shopping here? Well, um, this is a great place to start because you have all the big stores, all the best designs and styles, but you also have the fun things to do for the kids. Yeah, we like that as mothers. We have kids entertained and we can shop a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Right? What other places would you suggest? Of course, you can always go to Rodeo Drive or on Melrose, and, but that's all the really high-end, expensive stuff. So if you really want a bargain, you can go downtown. It's not very well known, but there's a huge fashion district. In the middle of downtown, it's like 90 blocks of shopping. Really? 90 blocks? And you can get a great deal. He likes to go with his Nana. His Nana loves to shop, and she takes him down there, and they try to get the best deal, and he loves it. Don't miss the chance to enjoy the Los Angeles Farmer's Market for a fresh taste of California. And be sure to enjoy a stop at the Grove for a fun trolley ride and much more. We head a few miles west to get inspired. Here at the Getty Center, art will inspire the whole family. The Getty Museum houses paintings, drawings, sculptures, manuscripts, and photographs. Art museums are great for kids, too. And the family room at the Getty is the perfect place to start. The family room is bursting with things to do. It's a great place to learn and explore. Maybe you'll notice some resemblance to the gallery pieces. The art expands outside. A fun way to explore the outdoor space is with the art detective cards. It's over here. Oh, look, look at the garden, you guys. The cards are a fun activity to get children engaged in learning about art. All right, you guys, let's look for the next thing. Look, look at the picture. It's called a boulder fountain. Do you see it anywhere? Yeah, over there. Okay, let's go walk towards it. Ooh. Adley, that's your favorite color, huh? It's weird, it blue. <laughs> yeah, purple, blue. Purple. There's a whole bunch of them. They're all over. Scotty, what color are those flowers? My yellow. I... <laughs> Adelaide, no, what color they're are they? Purple. Purple. Purple? Purple. No, they're pink. I they're think purple. they're pink. If you want to jumpstart your family's love of art, make sure to stop off at the Getty Center. LA is not only known for art lovers, but for car enthusiasts too. Let's head southeast to spend an afternoon in automotive paradise. From hot wheels to hot rods, you'll find it all at the Peterson Automotive Museum. The museum has two floors of world-class automobiles. On the first and second floor, Hollywood star cars, historic vehicles, and alternative fuel cars fill the space. On the third floor is the Discovery Center, a hands-on experience where kids can sit in cars, play with toys, and learn about car mechanics. 
there is even a place to race. Kids clearly love the museum. Clayton Drescher explains what makes it so unique. So I've been to a, a lot of other automotive museums, but why is this so unique? The Peterson Automotive Museum is unique because we show our automobiles in context, in historic context with architectural pieces, and also in context with other vehicles of, of a type or a, or a design or of a theme that we've identified. And we rotate our exhibits, so there's always something new to see at the museum. We show vehicles in context of where they would be in real life. We've, we've got a uh, first floor diorama of 100 years of Los Angeles history where you see craftsman style houses from the 1920s with the equivalent vehicle from 1927. And we show a 1960s suburban garage with a MG Roadster and a station wagon. So you, you see the vehicles as they would have been used and lived in by uh, our grandparents and our parents and ourselves. So you kind of see it in, in an environment rather than surrounded by rope. You know, Correct. It's just how they used to live. That's right. That's really cool. I've never seen that before. We like to show things that you expect to see and then something new. So there's always a, a, a reason to come visit the Peterson. Gearheads of all ages will have a blast at the Peterson Automotive Museum. While the kids enjoyed all the interactive displays, I chatted with the Cardinal family. So you're a family of car lovers. What do you think of this museum? I think it's great. Growing up building cars with my parents, doing it with my kids, I think it's a great tradition to come here and, and have fun together. As a mom, yeah, definitely. We spent a lot of time going to car shows where people have put a lot of money into vehicles that they cannot touch. And, um, you know, that's something that he enjoys going to. And so there's the, the floors where, you know, he can go see the car show vehicles. But then we have these floors up here where the kids can come and, and get their hands involved and have the learning experience where they can see how everything works, but they're allowed to touch it. Yeah, it's always good that you touch it. But it's great for moms and dads, too, because you got the first two floors where you can see these beautiful vehicles from all these different eras, and, you know, you don't want to touch those. But you can come up to the third floor, and the kids can run around and touch everything. So it's kind of like a little reward at the end. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think it's great that you're a family, and you love cars, and you do this together. If your family appreciates cars as much as this one does, you'll want to drive down to the Peterson Automotive Museum. Bakeries specializing in cupcakes can be seen throughout the world. Ever wonder where this phenomenon began? Well, look no further. We've arrived in Beverly Hills, where the first cupcake shop was born. Kids love cupcakes, and making them as a family is a fun activity. Doing things by hand sets these cupcakes apart, so we get a lesson on how to frost the perfect cupcake, and the kids won't even realize they are gaining important skills. A local family from Los Angeles County helped me in making some treats. We set the kids up with small utensils and bowls of frosting so they could practice their small motor skills. Want to give it a try? Yeah. Sounds All good, right. guys. All right. Let's take a cake. Perfect. Oh, my goodness. Yes, he does. He, he makes a lot with the kids. <laughs> the simple act of frosting a cupcake incorporates hand-eye coordination. Smush it around. Smush, smush, smush. Get it nice, and then you're going to cover all the sides. While the kids decorated their cupcakes, the adults talked about how baking is a fun family tradition that involves a variety of skills. Do you think baking is a teaching experience? Yeah, absolutely. They, lo they love it. They uh, love measuring and cups and tablespoons and teaspoons and figuring it all out. Absolutely. And bonding as a family? Always. It's their favorite thing in the world to do. Yeah. And you're teaching them a lifelong thing, too. But you want me to help you with the sprinkles? Okay. It's amazing how many people can cook. So it's <laughs> wonderful teaching them at a young age, you know, how to make their own food and, and, and what it takes. Who knew we would be teaching kids about technology at a cupcake shop? But that's just what we did next at the first ever cupcake ATM machine. OK, this is so exciting. So how does this work? OK, so it has all of the flavors that we offer here in the store. So tons of flavors to choose from. So you just come up here. You can scroll through and just pick whichever flavor that you'd like. Though we couldn't see the inner workings of the ATM machine, we learned that every day the cupcake machine is loaded with 600 cupcakes. Visitors can select a flavor, and the machine is able to retrieve the correct treat. And then it's going to dispose it right here. Technology is amazing. Now that's the way to get some dough from an ATM. About three miles from Sprinkles Cupcakes, you'll find our next sticky adventure.
There are so many things to see at the La Brea Tar Pits, but I hate to burst your bubble, there are no dinosaurs here. No dinosaurs, but there are animals that date back from the Ice Age. The animals were trapped in the tar pits that were scattered all over the area. Today, paleontologists work to excavate bones of animals that were trapped in the pits so many years ago. Visitors can take a tour that guides them around the museum, including Project 23 and the Fishbowl Lab. If you can't make a tour, go to the teacher's resource page on the website and print out the scavenger hunt. The Condes family from Los Angeles met me at the tar pits for a special adventure that we found online. Do you guys want to do it? Yeah! All right, let's go. Come on. Yeah. Hi. Hi. This is the world's most difficult game. <laughs> you guys might know it, ball and cup. But you can even try the game. Oh, look at this. Wow. It says, this is what it is to be stuck in tar. Oh my gosh, I can't even get this off. Oh my gosh. What do you think of this? Is this hard? Uh, not too hard with this skinny one. It's like a deer. Hi. That's right. This is a really good thing to notice. The skinny one is like a deer, and the fat one is like a mammoth. Mammoth or oh. bear or something like that. Wow. You know, this is why we have millions hard. and millions of fossils here. It's not because there are more animals right here than any place else in the world. It's because of the asphalt. So yes, there's really nothing like this in the world. It's a place of education, a place of learning about the past, where families can come and, you know, think about things other than just entertainment. I mean, that's really important. What you're looking at here, this is actually one tooth of a Colombian oh. mammoth. Wow. So these are the mammoths we find here. If you guys want to hold on to that, this is one tooth. And that doesn't feel very heavy, does it? No. If that was a real mammoth tooth, that would weigh 30 pounds. Wow. Okay? And this guy had only four in his mouth at once, so each of his teeth looked like this. The scavenger hunt encourages people to use all of their senses. OK, here's the question. What do you see? I see bubbles, bubbles methane gas. OK, good answer. What do you smell? Tar. Weird smell. Do you hear anything? What do you hear? The bubbling Ooh. when it gets a really big bubble. Or... So you hear bubbling? Yeah, from the methane gas bubbles. Oh, that was my next question. What yeah. makes it bubble? What does it make? What makes it bubble? Methane gas. The scavenger hunt ends with finding everything from A to Z. Blast off and watch your imagination soar as we head to south of downtown. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's the Space Shuttle Endeavor. And it's available for all to see at the California Science Center. Admission to the California Science Center is free. There are many exhibits for families, including the Ecosystems Gallery and the Family Discovery Room. The Cooper and Circle families join me for an out-of-this-world experience in the Samuel Ocean Space Shuttle Endeavor Pavilion. After the Space Shuttle Endeavor completed its mission, it came back home to Los Angeles. While the families looked on at the displays, I got some insider info on the Endeavor. I'm here with Dr. Ken Phillips, and he was instrumental in bringing the Endeavor here. What was that like? It was an amazing experience, yeah. It took a long time to happen, but when it unfolded, it was, uh, it went very quickly, finally. We moved it 12 miles through the streets of Los Angeles from the airport to the Science Center. <laughs> that was, that was wow. the most difficult of all the missions that it took, I'm sure. And, That's amazing. Uh, it was amazing, yeah. Why was it important for you to bring it here? It's important for the kids um, because it's a contemporary spacecraft. It's something that people recognize instantly. It's iconic. It changed the way America did business in space. It built the International Space Station. This actual spaceship flew 25 missions, every one of them quite different, all unique, and it managed to survive 25 launches and 25 re-entries into the atmosphere. Wow, now and it's here. It's here. What was the original mission of the Endeavour? Uh, the first mission was the recovery of a wayward satellite. It had been launched into the wrong orbit. So why was it named Endeavor? It's a great question. It was named Endeavor because school children named it in a national contest. The oh. Space Shuttle and the Challenger carried the teacher, Krista McAuliffe. It was thought fitting that students should name the replacement vehicle for the Challenger, and this is the replacement vehicle for the Challenger. 
Though you can't touch the shuttle, you can see some of the original parts up close and personal. In addition to the Endeavour, visitors can check out the Space Hab, which was used as a workshop for the astronauts. So what was this, do you think, down there? I don't know. It might have been some kind of storage place or something. Or maybe that is where they slept. Do you see the burn marks on there? Everybody always thinks it's going to be really shiny and pretty. This is what I learned. But it's not shiny and pretty because it went through the atmosphere. It and went through which guys are you 25 missions. Oh, that's right. And, and it went over, through fire. And, and over 122, wait, uh, 122 million um, miles to space. Where'd you learn that? Uh, on the Oh, I'm impressed. Wow, wow, that's really good. It was a privilege to visit the Space Shuttle Endeavor at the California Science Center, the perfect place to inspire everyone to learn more about science. The last stop on our vacation takes us to the birthplace of Los Angeles. Oh, Vera Street, a place with a rich culture and history. I met up with John, who told me all about the birthplace of Los Angeles. Well, you're actually walking through Los Angeles Plaza, and this plaza has been here since the city was first founded. It has always been the center of Los Angeles. And if you've ever traveled in Latin America or Mexico, you know that every pueblo or village has a central plaza or a placita. Yes. Well, Los Angeles is no different. We have ours right here. And a lot of people, when they come here from those parts of the world, they see this and they say, this looks familiar. I know where I am. I'm in the middle of the city. Wow, this is beautiful. Tell me about the history of this place. Well, the history of this place is very interesting because where we are today was actually under the flag of three different nations. It started out in 1781 as New Spain, which was Spain, and then from there it went to Mexico, under the governance of Mexico, and after Mexico it became the United States of America. So today Los Angeles is here because of the history and the, uh, and the culture of three different countries. Wow, look at this place. What is this? Okay, we have made it to the Avila Adobe. This house is the oldest existing home in the city of Los Angeles. It was built in 1818 by Don Francisco Avila. He was actually mayor of Los Angeles in 1810. And this was his home. This home is the reason why Olvera Street Mexican Marketplace is here today. And it has to do with a very special woman. Her name is Christine Sterling. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about her inside. Wow, I can, can't wait to hear. Look, it's free. It is free. We like free. Actually, all of our museums at El Pueblo are free and open to the public. We are now in the courtyard of the historic Avila Adobe home, the first house, 1818. Now, I'm gonna explain to you how this, how, what this house has to do with the Mexican marketplace we just walked through. Yeah. Now, as I told you, in the 1800s, the, the Avila family lived here. In the late 1800s, it was kind of a boarding house place, and it fell into disrepair. In the early part of the 1900s, this was really falling apart, so much so that the county health department condemned it and was gonna knock it down. That's when Christine Sterling came into the picture. She came here and saw this part of the town. It was very, very, very dirty, very crime-ridden. Said, I gotta do something about this, and this house should not be destroyed. And what she did was, she called Harry Chandler from the LA Times, called a bunch of political people from City Hall. Let's, let's get an effort to make this thing get restored, conserved, and it happened. She saved it. She's, she saved the Avila Adobe. This is the oldest existing house in Los Angeles. After my tour, I met up with the Garby family, and we continued to tour the Avila Adobe house. Do so you think it's important to bring families to historical places just like this? I do. I mean, I've never been here, and it's so important to have a day full of meaning and history. and and teach them something while they're having fun. And I noticed you brought your mom here. Mm -hmm. What is it like to be a grandma here? Is this something great for grandmas to do too? It is, I mean, I think it's a little low key. It's not an amusement park with lots of lights and stuff going around, lots of people. So, and it's a, it's a special day with all of us together. Yeah, something yeah. everybody can do together, which exactly. is great. After the adobe house, we couldn't leave Overa Street without trying some taquitos. The Mexican dish consists of a small rolled up tortilla with some type of filling, usually chicken, cheese, or beef. This is the, supposed to be the place where the taquito was born, so I'm hoping we can try oh, it. You want to try so some? Cool, yeah, let's try it. Oliver, okay. you want to try? Yeah. All right, come on up, Oliver, let's order. 
Salito Lindo has been serving taquitos with guacamole sauce since the 1930s, when Mrs. Sterling helped single mom and owner Aurora Guerrero launch her business. The boys, yours are right here. Oh my gosh. Is this great? Yeah. Mm. It's awesome. The best. <laughs> the best. <laughs> On your next trip to LA, don't forget about Olvera Street, where the city got its start. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> what a great way to end our trip. We had such an exciting and educational trip on our visit to Los Angeles. I'm Colleen Kelly. Thanks for watching Family Travel. Enjoy making memories on your next family vacation. Funding provided by... Kids think travel's all about fun, but parents know it broadens horizons, introduces kids to new cultures, and makes lasting memories. And that's pretty awesome. Family travel equals family fun. City Pass. For more information on upcoming destinations and projects, visit FamilyTravelCK.com. Follow us on Twitter and find us on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you.